Hello, SMC and YouTube. Honestly, uh, this was the first week that I actually had a really good cry uh, about our situation and especially about our time of worship. And so I'm just so glad we can be together like this. And right now, I'd like to just pray for our time in the word. Let's pray together. Lord, thank you again for your presence. Thank you for your word. Thank you that it can reach, it can stretch to wherever we are, whenever we are together uh, in this way. Lord, I pray that you would help us. I pray that you would hold us. I pray that you would now open us up to your word, that we could hear the message that you have for us today. And as always, Lord, I pray that there would be oh so much more of you and so much less of me. Through Christ I come. Amen. The title of today's message is Triumph in the Tunnel. Today we remember Palm Sunday in a way that I can never remember celebrating it before. This is usually a Sunday that little kids carry palm branches and we sing Hosanna and we celebrate Jesus coming to town. But everyone knows that behind the joy in that old story, there is sorrow. In a few days, the adoring crowds would turn into an unruly mob. Now, every year I try to bring our church into this week of tragedy and triumph with services that bring us together in the tension of Holy Week. But this year, we need to be apart. Even so, I can't help but draw parallels to our current situation. There is every indication that we are on the verge of a very dark and dangerous time. The leaders of our state are projecting a time of crisis that we've not seen in a hundred years. Yet it's also Easter time. And Holy Week will begin. This is where I would have you consider the simple sermon summary. If you want to jot this down, this is your sermon in about six seconds. So here it comes. Jesus could see light at the end of the tunnel, and we should too. Jesus could see light at the end of the tunnel, and we should too. Many of you have journeyed together with me through our Gospels in 90 days, and we are now one week from being done. Congratulations if you've been tracking with us. If you recall, there are few events that are captured in all four Gospels. But this is one of them, what we're going to study today. I always like to say, if your mom tells you something once, you should probably pay attention. If mom tells you twice, you should take note. Three times, you better get it right. And four times, you know that that is important. God shares this scene in all four Gospels, so I know it's important. I know there's something we need to learn today. This is a moment of high drama in our text, a roller coaster of emotions. Everyone seems to be on, and it plays out right before our eyes. I know we are in John 12, but I will also be peeking back at Luke for added dialogue of this momentous event. Though you and I seem to be heading into a dark time of suffering and fear, we can know Jesus himself once headed in that way too with terrible certainty, yet incredible determination. He faced the path ahead with faith and love, courage and even joy to see it through, all for God's glory. Friend, I can't tell you how far into the dark we must go in the coming weeks ahead. But I can tell you this, that there's light at the end of the tunnel 
for those who follow Jesus through it. So let's see how he goes. I'm in John, the Gospel of John, chapter 12, verses 12 through 19. Again, the Gospel of John, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. John, chapter 12, verses 12 through 19. The next day, the great crowd that had come from the feast heard that Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem. They took palm branches and went out to meet him, shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the King of Israel. Verse 14. Jesus found a young donkey and sat upon it. As it is written, Don't be afraid, O daughter of Zion. See, your king is coming and seated on a donkey's colt. If you would like a sub-point to jot down for verses 12 through 15, it is simply this. Jesus is a king of another kind. Jesus is a king of another kind. If you'd like an application question to ponder, we could say, the world is crying, save us, are you. The world in the text was crying, save us. The world today is crying, save us. Friend, are you crying that out to God? Jesus has come to town and the people are crying out to him, save us. That's what Hosanna means. But what did they want saved from? At that time, it was from the Romans, from hunger, from sickness. You name it, we need to be saved from it. The people cried out to him as he rode into town that day, hoping he would do for them what they thought they needed. You know, that's not entirely different from what people are shouting today, is it? Lord, save us from the virus. Save the stock market. Save my job. Save us from the Democrats. Save us from the Republicans. We've got people shouting, save us, save us. But friends, let's look closely. Jesus came riding on a donkey, a humble king, riding in peace. Jesus came to bring us peace but not political peace, not financial peace, not even a peace that is a physical guarantee of safety or healing. No, friends, the peace he gives is bigger and better than that. In fact, unless you have his peace first, none of the rest matter. Because if you have his peace, then you can handle all the other conflicts that may come. I would suggest that is exactly what we need saving right now. Verse 16, let's continue. At first, his disciples did not understand all this. Only after Jesus was glorified did they realize that these things had been written about him and that they had done these things to him. Now the crowd that was with him when he called Lazarus from the tomb and raised him from the dead continued to spread the word. Verse 18, many people, because they had heard that he had given this miraculous sign, went out to meet him. If you'd like a sub point for verses 16 to 18, the crowds were looking for life that would last. The crowds were looking for life that would last. Are you? Can you imagine that you hear of a man who just raised someone from the dead? In fact, not just from the dead, four days dead. I think people would get a little bit excited. Let's glance back at that event and hear what Jesus said that may still be ringing in their ears that Palm Sunday. I just need you to go back a page or two in your Bible to John chapter 11, verses 25 and 26. Just go back a page or two to John chapter 11, verses 25 and 26. I want you to look very closely at what Jesus said. 
Again, John chapter 11, verses 25 and 26. Jesus proclaims, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, even though he dies, and whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Then a little while later, Jesus raises Lazarus from the dead for everyone to see. Can you imagine? A crowd of people who were grieving the death of a friend. In fact, a friend who had just died from an illness. We can glean from the story of Lazarus' death that he wasn't even sick very long. Must have been a very powerful illness because we see that he died in a matter of days. Does any of this ring familiar to you? I wonder if there would have been those there who, who might have thought, will I get sick next? Am I going to die too? When death comes around, everybody begins to ask the ominous question, am I next? Dear friends, this is a good and honest question to ask ourselves. Even at this time, am I ready to die? Many in the crowd who followed Jesus that day saw him raise Lazarus. And the rest of the crowd heard about it and thought, here's a man who conquered death. And they were right, except that he hadn't really done it completely quite yet. That comes next Sunday. The truth is, they had no clue how he was going to do it either. They were focused on a short-term fix to a long-term problem. Jesus didn't come to save us from sickness and earthly death, but to give us peace and meaning and purpose to our lives that will last for all eternity. The crowds were excited, and Jesus was glad for their joy, and he embraced it for a moment. Now, like I told you we might do, we're going to turn back to Luke. If you want to go back a book to Luke chapter 20. Luke chapter 20, verses 37 through 42. If you could go in your Bibles to Luke chapter 20, verses 37 to 42. You need to hit the pause button right now. You can do it while you turn there. This is a powerful section. I'm going to go ahead. I'm in Luke chapter 20, verse 37. When he came near the place where the road goes down the Mount of Olives, the whole crowd of disciples began joyfully to praise God in loud voices for all the, mirac all the miracles they had seen. Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. Verse 40. I tell you, Jesus replied, if they keep quiet, the stones will cry out. Now I'm just going to tell you, uh, my YouTube crowd, you should, you should just punch in a search for the stones cry out. There are so many really amazing songs about the stones crying out. Uh, you should just check it out after the sermon. Friends, we are caught in our own drama today. I hope as we move into this holy week that points us towards the greatest event in history, a moment that literally changed the world, I hope you can feel joy even as we are in this historic time of darkness. I hope you can find a moment to praise God for his arrival in your life and salvation you found in him, no matter how dark the tunnel we are moving through may get. You need to know that I struggle with my own emotions from day to day. The pending gloom and doom of this virus seeks to steal my joy in Jesus, but I must not let it. I believe even today, if we don't praise Jesus, the stones will still cry out. I like to believe 
the praise of Jesus was loud and lasted a long time that day. Friend, you know, I don't know if I've ever seen a stone cry out, but I wish you would go look at some daffodils that are bursting forth. They're, they're blooming. There's, there's Easter happening all over the place outside. Can you join them in their celebration? I hope so. I hope you too can find times in the coming week to praise him for what he's done. But then, also remember the reality of what he needed to go through to bring us through the darkness. Jesus was headed right into the tunnel. He knew it. Here we have even Jesus experiencing the full swing of emotions as we finish out the text in Luke. Again, I'm in Luke chapter 20, going to finish up with verses 41 and 42. As he approached Jerusalem, he saw the city. And he saw the city, he wept over it. And he said, if you, even you, had only known on this day what would bring you peace. But now it is hidden from your eyes. Through the cheering and the palm branches, Jesus could still see they were missing the point. He knew their praise, though sweet, would be short-lived. He knew what he was headed into, and that it would be ugly, painful, and ultimately lead to death on the cross. On top of all that, he knew people would miss the whole reason he was doing what he was doing, and then reject and even resent him. Dear friends, this is so hard to swallow, especially at a time like this, but Jesus is pointing to a path of suffering that ultimately will lead to salvation. There is light at the end of the tunnel. The crowd that followed him that day couldn't see it. Even the disciples who'd been told suffering was on the way. We see in verse 16, back in John 12, but they didn't see it coming. Here's the difference, friends. Here's the difference between us and them. We can see it coming. We have the profound benefit of hindsight. We know the end of the story. We can see the light at the end of the tunnel and know the light. That there is light there that will make us forget in the end. It will make us forget we even went through a tunnel. In fact, it'll make us forget there was even ever a tunnel. Let me finish up. Back in John 12. If you didn't turn back to John 12, uh, you can pause the play and then meet me there when you get to John 12, verse 19. John 12, verse 19. So the Pharisees said to one another, See, this is getting us nowhere. Look how the whole world has gone after him. If you want just a little sub point for verse 19, this is the truth about the whole world for better or worse. This is the truth about the whole world for better or for worse. And then I would just ask you, have you gone after him? And if you have not gone after Jesus, what are you waiting for? What a beautifully prophetic word from Jesus' enemies. Look how the whole world has gone after him. The whole world has gone after Jesus. If they only knew that 2,000 years later, he is one of the few people in history that we celebrate his birth and remember his death, but he is the only person in history that we revel in his resurrection. Now, I don't mean to get all Eastery on you, 
But this is the point. No matter how dark things get in the near future, Jesus will see us through. Just like the emotional roller coaster he rode on the back of that little donkey on Palm Sunday. Today, if you are feeling like you are heading into a tunnel, financially, professionally, emotionally, spiritually, or physically, you may feel yourself riding into that place of darkness. Know that there is indeed light at the end of the tunnel. In fact, if you know Jesus, there's light in the middle of the tunnel because he will go there with you like he always has, and like he always will, even today. Would you pray with me? Lord, thank you. Thank you that you are the light. You're the light at the beginning of the tunnel. You're the light in the middle of the tunnel. You're the light at the end of the tunnel. Lord, thank you that we can rely on you and the light that you bring, even in the midst of darkness. Lord, I pray that you would continue to bless us as a people who know you. Lord, the people who know you, I pray, would continue to shine your light, especially our, our medical workers. Lord, help them to be light. Lord, everyone who's working out in the world right now, Lord, and they know you, help them to be light. Help them to shine brightly as the darkness closes in. Lord, I pray that even though things are getting dark, we would still remember the light of Easter Sunday morning. Prepare us through this Holy Week as we remember what you went through. Prepare us for Easter Sunday that we can celebrate your resurrection. And Lord, for those who don't know you, I pray that they would reach out to you, even in the darkness, and know that you are there. Lord, again, I thank you so much for this time we can share together. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen, and now, go in his peace, and have a blessed week. Amen.